Okay, so here we're looking at micronutrients, um, sometimes called trace elements. And keep in mind, micronutrients are essential for plant growth, but just needed in small amounts. So starting with uh, the first one here, boron, represented by the letter B, this helps uh, in the use of nutrients and regulates other nutrients also. Um, an example would be calcium. So calcium and boron levels are often compared to one another because uh, they can boron can influence the amount of availability of calcium. It's essential for seed and fruit development. Deficiencies are encouraged if plants are water stressed and the humidity is very low. Also, if soil or media calcium levels are low. Borax or boric acid are common sources of boron if you're looking at supplementing them uh, to your plants. Uh, chloride uh, is often considered to be a soil contaminant, and at high levels this is true. Uh, chloride, though, is needed by plants. It's kind of considered a soil contaminant because it's a negative ion, and it kind of influences some of uh, the availability of some cations. But it is needed at least in these kind of micronutrient amounts because it's important to help regulate the stomata, which are areas below the leaves that help air come in and out and also regulate water, and it helps the plant balance its interaction with the environment. It's also necessary for the photosynthetic process to allow that to function properly. So again, in these high amounts, uh, not the best thing, but it is needed in some amounts by the plant. Copper is another one. It's required for many enzymatic activities in plants and for chlorophyll and seed production, all very vital tasks of the plant. Uh, most common cause for deficiency is a pH imbalance and not a lack of copper in the media. So this is again why I stress that it's important to be monitoring and knowing what your pH is because this is one micronutrient in particular that can be drastically affected by swings in pH. You want to pay, pay a special attention to the leaves around the buds or tips from, uh, that are turning yellow and lower parts of the leaves getting a darker than normal green color. This can be evident of a copper deficiency. Uh, it's of concern for cannabis in particular because it can stunt bud formation. If you stunt bud formation, that's kind of where uh, all the main driving cannabinoid production is. And if that gets stunted because of low copper, that can really impact your final harvest. Going on to iron here, represented by Fe, it's involved in the formation of enzymes and chlorophyll. Leaves will yellow if deficient, but will typically be the upper leaves, not the lower ones like nitrogen or a magnesium deficiency. Uh, so this is kind of a citrus plant, but kind of get the idea that's the upper leaves that are yellowing. Uh, iron typically used, you know, a lot in greenhouses and for structural support, uh, but it is also a nutrient. It's a common problem with cocoa coir simply because of some of the properties of this particular media. Manganese, again, not to be confused with uh, magnesium, this is manganese represented by MN, functions with enzyme systems involved with the breakdown of carbohydrates, nitrogen metabolism, and photosynthesis. You can see here's a uh, fertilizer here, corrects the frizzle leaf in palms, so commonly a palm tree fertilizer for whatever reason, um, and, but it is manganese is needed by all plants here. Molybdenum is needed in such small amounts it's very unlikely to be the case of a deficiency uh, in most instances. If growing in a purely hydroponic situation, there may be a chance of this occurring, but many fertilizers contain some level of, molyb of molybdenum and it's not needed in large amounts. I have the picture here of a thimble because it's like to grow an acre of corn, you need like a thimble full amount of molybdenum for the entire acre. So again, when I say small amounts, very small amounts. While this is what the actual element looks like, the fertilizer form is not the pure element. It'd be uh, in a molecule complex. So the last one we're going to look at here is zinc. It's not a common occurrence in cannabis, uh, but where it does occur, it can be a major issue. Uh, it's not very mobile, uh, so you're likely to find the symptoms show up in newer growth. It doesn't really translocate through the plant very well. Because of this, it can be an issue if you're cloning a plant. Since the cutting is taken towards the end, um, the plant, uh, this zinc may have a hard time getting there. So if you take a um, recent clones and they all turn yellow fairly quickly, there's a chance you could be zinc deficient in the plant. And I mentioned this just because if you're looking at kind of feeding particularly mother plants, you want to make sure that they're healthy. Um, if zinc is an issue in the media you've been growing in, something to keep in mind, especially if you're looking to clone that plant here, because you'll be re removing that tip and you want to make sure that it maintains a nice green coloration so they can absorb light and produce quality roots and allow you to have the next generation. So again, one, it's not a major concern, but if you're having problems with your clones, one you may want to investigate.